All right. Hello and welcome to Wacom at Home Online Sessions. This week's session is brought to you by Lamy. Today we will talk about online classrooms with a digital pen and hopefully answer all your questions. But before we jump into the presentation, let me just share with you some of the basic rules we have. The session will last approximately one hour and we will have time to answer your questions you might have towards the end. Please use the Q&A function of the Zoom for your questions to the presenter and the presented content. For technical issues like the screen share not working or audio problems, please use the chat box. We will keep an eye on the chat for those issues and address them immediately. Please be respectful for the others and do not spam the chat box. In case you want to chat or reply to other people's comments, you can just switch your two option from all panelists to all panelists and attendees. This session is being recorded and it will be available on Wacom YouTube page in the next couple, in the next couple of days. If you are new to Zoom, please do, please do check out the gallery view and speaker view options to find the best viewing experience for yourself. Click around freely, you cannot break anything. And you can also adjust the slider between screen share and the camera feed to find the ideal camera settings for your viewing pleasure. So today we have a special offer for you all. For only the next 24 hours, you can save 20% on your Wacom One with the Lamy All-Star Black EMR purchases via Wacom eStore. If you visit the Wacom eStore, you can find this option under, under the special offers category as a bundle offer. This offer is only valid in the Wacom UK and EMEA eStore, um, but you can just go ahead and check it after the session is over. So who we are? Uh, Wacom, for those of you who don't know, we've been around for a couple of years, pretty much uh, almost 40 years, and we are the pioneers of the digital pen input technology. So whenever you are working or creating on a digital, uh, on a digital content uh, with your computer, and when you realize that a mouse or a trackpad doesn't cut it, that's when you need a Wacom tablet. So you can learn more about us by visiting wacom.com. Uh, and our other presenters and our other uh, partner today, Lamy, uh, to do the introduction, I will let Carl talk about Lamy. So can you all hear me? Yes, perfectly clear. And can you even see me? Crispy. Perfect. So um, yeah, hi, I'm Carl. I'm checking in from, from Lamy headquarters here in the beautiful city of Heidelberg in uh, Germany which is uh, Lamy's hometown. And uh, I would uh, first of all, like to thank all the participants for joining us today. We highly appreciate your attendance and um, many thanks to Wacom, our technology partner for technically setting up this, um, this online session. And special thanks also to our communication partner, Pavo, who will be running the show today. Um, yeah, Lamy is the world's leading analog writing instruments brand is, uh, is very much uh, embracing the digital adventure. And uh, most of you probably know Lamy for, for a very long time. And uh, most likely you have been using analog writing instruments for, for many years. So today, with today's online session, we want to build awareness that um, Lamy writing instruments are available both as analog writing instruments, but also as uh, digital writing instruments. And the quality and the ergonomics and the perfection that we are achieving in inside our analog writing instruments, the same is available for our digital writing instruments. For, for Lamy as a brand and as a company, Writing by hand is a, is a true matter of the heart. We firmly and honestly believe that uh, writing by hand can significantly support thinking processes, learning processes, creative processes. And as such, we want to make sure that in an ever more digitalized world, we can basically support and achieve a seamless transition between let's say analog writing, analog learning, analog um, thinking uh, to, to, to digital writing, digital learning, digital um, ways of working. So 
this is being done by by providing the world not only with the best um, analog writing instruments but also with the best um, digital writing instruments and one of these um, fantastic digital writing instruments will be um, presented to you today by our partner Pavo in combination with Vacom, uh, Vacom's fantastic Vacom One um, pen display. So Pavo will be running the show today and from time to time I will be checking in um, to, to ask him some questions. And Pavo for you, um, there's no, um, I, I can tell you the motto is there's no um, stupid questions. There's only stupid answers. So um, watch out for my questions and uh, to all people attending, um, have a great online session. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, Carl. Let me just quickly introduce Pavo to you all. Pavo is an illustrator and a multimedia designer who loves type design in the form of hand and brush lettering. Um, you can see Pavo's work in a lot of different areas. He's uh, in a lot of the live events whenever they happen. He also creates business illustrations for companies and is holding uh, visualization workshops uh, online and offline. And his tools are both analog and digital. So he has the he is the perfect uh, person to speak in this event in terms of talking about and comparing pros and cons of the both worlds. So without further ado, I will let Pavo to do his presentation and also Carl. And Pavo, feel free to start your uh, you can share your screen whenever you feel. Well then, let's go. Hi there. Thank you, Vakom. Thank you, Ono, for this um, uh, beautiful and nice uh, introduction of me and my person. Uh, thanks, Carl, for introducing Lamy, and thank you both for having me again. Uh, I've been here, what was it, I think a month and a half ago before, and we uh, talked about the same topic, nearly the same topic um, in German, and today it's going to be all in English. Um, me, I'm not an English native speaker, but uh, I do and try my best, so uh, just don't listen to some some grammar things if I uh, don't talk like you are, like you think I should. <laughs> not kidding. Um, everybody hears me, everybody sees me, and do you see, Ono, can you tell us, um, do you see my setup right here with the um, top view cam? Yes, we can perfectly. Excellent, excellent. So um, let me give you just a quick overview. Um, to those, today's topic is the, um, as Carl already said, the online classroom with pen in the hand. Uh, the pen is going to be the stylus uh, in, in the digital world. We call dig digital pens, we call them stylus with um, what is, I think is, it's a good and, and a nice uh, technical word for this, for this uh, tool because it has got style. Lamy pants do have style. So um, whenever I, ever I say or whenever I talk about a stylus, it's this pen that I'm talking about. And um, the agenda for today is pretty, pretty much split up into three sections. I would like to start with um, the question why. Why is handwriting so important? Why why, um, what is the effect of the digital world that, that developed over the last years? Uh, what effect did it have on, on handwriting and uh, how are things developing or, or how hopefully I think things are gonna develop in the, in the, near, in the near future. And then uh, I'm gonna switch to the with what question. I'm gonna show you my setup. I'm gonna show you the Wacom one. And I'm gonna tell you a bit about the stylus, the stylus from Lamy, the All Star Black EMR, this one. And uh, the last part is gonna be about uh, how I, I will show you the software or the apps that I'm using here right now. Uh, this is OneNote, just to um, tell you no already. The, I will show you Evernote. I will show you some um, maybe some tips and and uh, handlings how you can work with PDFs and um, how all this together might be a good solution or is at least one of uh, a good solution for the online classroom for all this. I mean, the last weeks and months uh, did show us that that uh, teaching can be um, can be held up on, on distance. We don't have to be in the same room anymore. Unfortunately, we had we didn't have to be in the in the same room, but uh, in cases of whatever, not just a pandemic. 
um, this is a setup that all teachers and students um, can use and maybe even should uh, give a try to yeah to to make learning on distance um, a quite good experience um, yes Carl already started and told you a little bit about about the digital world that uh, developed very very fast over the last years um, I'm not telling you anything any new stuff uh, the last years we we came up with mobile phones smartphones that do all the work for us we write emails we uh, write sms and chatters we don't even send text messages anymore we even send voice messages uh, this is the thing that's coming up and nobody is like um, writing letters anymore correct me if you do so that's a great and nice thing but uh, in my in my uh, nearer field i really don't know any person that is writing a hand or a letter by hand uh, uh, on the other hand, there are a lot of creatives that I that I um, in my community that I work with and that I talk with. They do use analog pens and, uh, and they do writings, um, but this they do more like as a hobby and uh, more like a recreative thing. But nobody is using the analog pen for communication anymore. I mean, it's not it's not necessary. You don't sit down and write. Uh, um, write a letter to your colleague or to your customers everything is basically switched uh, focused on on this on this mobile phone or the mo or the, or the digital tools and it's all about just type and swipe i call it the very fast way of write working in communication and um, everything is really getting faster you know it by yourself uh, you get easily distracted because you have all eyes on any any digital device around you your laptop your or if it's your uh, mobile phone or your tablet if you're using one um, whatever you are always trying to do your do a very fast way of writing and working and um, just as I said you don't write with the hand in you just use the keyboard but um, handwriting isn't about getting faster. The way, or, or, or um, said in, in, in another way, handwriting isn't isn't really thought to be a, a quick communication or way of communication or or, or, or as a tool. But uh, today we know, um, or the question that I ask myself is, uh, what's the point point about handwriting? Today, we know that handwriting supports several skills. Um, going back some years, when you remember the time when you've been in school, handwriting was and is today a very, very uh, big aspect and very important aspect of, of uh, developing the skills like the visual skills and the verbal skills and even the soul or, or the character, uh, character skills because your handwriting is part of you and the handwriting you have it characterizes you in a way like nobody else does you have a very own style of handwriting and this is something special and something worthful to to keep up with um, handwriting also keeps you to be, to to stay focused to uh, keep uh, concentrated on things um, just as a comparison as i said the mobile phone when you use it you are swiping and typing in a very very quick way but when you sit down and write um, write by hand, you do it much more focused and uh, concentrated. Thankfully, there is a trend coming back to handwriting um, over the last, um, for me, over the last maybe three to five years, um, I see a very big part of, uh, of the community, of the creative community here in Germany that is going back to classical handwriting uh, with a fountain pen that uses uh, even brush pens and, and all these calligraphy styles um, that is that are very uh, very nice to do as an, as a hobby or, or to to keep uh, um, to to spend time with. Uh, but on the other hand, um, Carl also said this in his uh, introduction: the um, the way of handwriting or the the skill, the ability of handwriting has got so enormous and cognitive potentials that uh, we have to we have to uh, keep for our uh, how do you say we don't, it's it's not a good uh, it's, it, we shouldn't lose them or like i like i used to say 
uh, use it like your handwriting use it before you lose it because um, if you stop writing and maybe you did maybe you don't write with your hand that much anymore um, you will you will um, you maybe have uh, made the experience that coming back to handwriting is on the one hand like like bicycle riding a bicycle you learn it once you will you will, won't uh, forget how to ride but it is a little bit uh, stumpy and, and you're not getting into handwriting just like this you have to yeah, you have to train it a bit um, a lot of people then come up and say well but hey i can write with a keyboard i don't have the time to write uh, to write with a with a bow by hand or with a pen or something else um, that's the point where i say well yes but um, just to show you a quick demonstration what happens when you when you just write with with the keyboard it's like every every key you press let me draw some keys first for example let us say E or F or A. Every key that you see on your keyboard when you write, you just press a key. And the, the motoric uh, um, sequence of this when you press a key, oh, that's good. You see it now way more better. Um, it's, it's, it's like all the same. Every, 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 um, every key feels the same and every letter feels the same so you don't um, work up or you don't do a, a connection between your hand and your uh, and your head so when you when you um, when you tap the e or when you tap the f it's the same motoric procedure and the same uh, thing for you and for your head but uh, while when you write with your hand and you write an e by hand or if you write an G by hand or any other letter, you have to uh, do a little bit more with your hand and head motoric skills. So these are things that you have learned in school. And um, if you come back to handwriting and, and work on this, you will, um, you will experience some, some really cool stuff uh, by writing down notes because we today know that um, the handwriting or writing by hand or taking notes stimulates the learning process. Um, information is being processed in a much more better way and it gets stored more sustainable. So um, if you remember uh, the time at school when you wrote this, ah, I, I forgot the English term, when you wrote this little notes before your class uh, classwork because you're before your exam, um, I, I didn't do this, <laughs> for sure not. No, yes, sure I did. I remember that the notes that, that I've been taking by hand, the little ones, uh, I, I, I did remember them the next day much more better than uh, well, the years later when I prepared some exam notes on the computer and printed them out. Um, this, was, this was like, just, uh, um, just as I explained, explained that all the notes that I was taping in with the keyboard didn't, um, didn't have this anchor in my head like when I wrote them down by hand. So handwriting keeps up your visual, verbal, motor, and motoric capabilities. Um, Pavo, Pavo, yes, it's, yes. Uh, it's, it's Carl checking in. Um, what you just described is, um, is basically this, this very positive effects that uh, handwriting has on, on, on let's say cognitive uh, development and learning processes and all that stuff. And I believe uh, most of the people attending the online session today, they have uh, experienced this when they were young and they, many of them will still experience it uh, today. Uh, but mainly by writing with an analog writing instrument on a like a fountain pen or ballpoint pen or rollerball pen on a on a on a piece of paper. That's right. um, for 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 most uh, people attending today's online session, um, it might be like a new feeling to write on with a digital writing instrument on a on a on a digital surface. So, what uh, kind of advice would you give people who who are basically holding a stylus or a digital writing instrument for the very first time in their hand? Uh, absolutely, exactly. The first time you take this uh, this pen, or, or let's let's jump like, let's jump into the second 
with what in, into the second uh, section of my, of my agenda. Um, I will come back to this. I will tell you some, some, some cool things about the Limey All-Star. But uh, just to come back to your questions, um, writing with a digital pen or, or writing with a stylus is, is a very, very new feeling to if you've never done this before. Um, the, the story I always try to explain it with and um, this is the story or our pictures like that come up in my head, head um, when you have been or when you went to the to ice skating your first time i don't know if if you did but it's slightly the same thing i mean you learned walking uh, walking uh, down the street or on your feet very early like a baby and um, you do this all the time you can run you can jump you can walk this is something you can do and when you put on the ice skates and uh, walk onto the ice it's a complete new feeling. You are still, you do, you do have the ability or the skills of walking, but it feels a lot of slippery. And that's the point where, 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 this, where working with a stylus gets a bit um, tricky. In case of this, or, or let's, say, let's say in the case of, of the Lamy uh, also, and in case of the Wacom One, we have two things um, that I show you later on, but I will tell you now already that are extremely good for any beginner because uh, the friction of the pen, of the tip of the pen is, um, is not like when you go the first time on ice. It's a little bit, uh, it, it feels like, like writing on paper and even the display of this Wacom one is a little bit more like, like, uh, uh, like paper. So it does feel like writing with a pen on a paper and it's, you don't have this uh, this strange feeling um, holding up on pen, a digital pen, and and uh, working on a digital uh, uh, display that you never worked on before. So um, let's get back up here and show you already the thing that I'm working with or the the setup that I would like to show you today. Um, Carl already said this is something very new that Lamy developed. Well, uh, not developed because they are using the EMR technology that Wacom developed, but they uh, put the technology into uh, into the ballpen, into the Lamy All Star that they uh, developed before. And these two things coming together are making a very very cool and nice tool to work with. Um, just as I said, the tip is extremely nice and, and, and has this little, uh, this feeling of working on paper when you when you write it it doesn't slip all the way it's you have this friction that helps you at the beginning a lot um, it has the functional design and ergonomics that Lamy does for years with all their uh, writing uh, um, writing tools that they, they developed and they, that they have in their in their in their tool set um, and uh, another cool thing about this Lamy also is that you don't need any battery. It's all, it's all in here. Uh, I mean, there is no battery in there. It works with the um, electromagnetic resonance short set EMR that Wacom developed. And uh, you just pull out the pen, switch on your tablet uh, or your pen display and start writing and start working. You don't have to wait till it is uh, up on 100% loaded or anything you just pull it out your case and start all over another one cool, another cool thing is um, it does have pressure levels over 4000 there so you can do a little bit like like calli calligraphy stuff when you press down and uh, when you press don't press this hard you can create thinner and thicker lines this makes writing a lot of much uh, or much as um, the experience of writing is as much as like it is with a real pen. So it doesn't feel unnatural. It feels very, very similar, uh, familiar. Uh, and that was like uh, the question Carl asked. The excellent friction I already mentioned and this stuff with this ice skating, you won't have this um, this this uh, it's not a, it's not a bad experience, but you won't, you won't have this experience when you go on ice, that it all is slippery. You can start with a pen even as a beginner in a very very um, cool way. 
Um, yeah, the other thing that I'm working on with is um, the Wacom One. This is a Creative Pen display. For all of you who don't uh, know any of the tablets or didn't see, saw any tablets before, Wacom um, has two types of tablets. There are these all matte tablets with no display. Um, I like, like the Intos, correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong. There are pen displays that you do can write on and re work with this pen on too, but you always have to keep your eyes on the display. So it's a little bit, tr little bit tricky at the beginning when you have to um, work on your hand and eye coordination. Um, but for the other way, on the other hand, you welcome also develop this pen display tablets where you mirror all the things that you see on your laptop or PC. Uh, you have this display in the, in the tablet and you see it already and then you see it instantly and you can work on like on your computer display or your laptop display. Um, later on, I will try to pick off my phone, Eric, and, uh, and I will show you the setup that I'm, that I'm working right now on. Um, it's maybe, maybe interesting, interesting to see that you don't really need any, any uh, lot of stuff. You don't need, need uh, uh, a big amounts of paper or, or books and all stuff. This is completely digital. You have your laptop, you have this display, and you have a pen and uh, you can uh, write on. Yeah, as I said, the display feels like paper. It's a paper, it's a little bit like, it's paper like display. You have this cool friction. Um, if you work with, di with, uh, with different uh, um, uh, operating systems, this is uh, no problem at all because Wacom tablets, they understand Windows, they work with Mac OS, with Android, even with Linux, you can uh, switch them together and uh, you have look for the right for the right driver and uh, install the driver and then there you go um, what I like about this Wacom uh, one two I, I don't have this setup right here but you can uh, take your Android phone phone and uh, connect it with an adapter to the Wacom one tablet two so it gives you um, much the ability of on one hand working mobile when you're maybe not at home um, but uh, but it also is a nice and cool way to uh, blow up your smartphone's display and uh, work on it with a pen um, on, on, on the tablet. Yeah, that's really cool. The Wacom tablet comes in with uh, some apps, some drawing apps and note apps. They're, they've got Bamboo Paper, Clip Studio and uh, much more. Um, one, one maybe important thing to say for right now, I'm working with a MacBook and um, for the Mac OS system, there aren't as that much uh, um, apps that work. <laughs> Sorry, the voice is low. I have to hold up my, my microphone a little bit. Um, so uh, what do you say? Yeah, the, for the MacBook, there aren't that, aren't that much uh, apps that, um, that fully understand the work with the tablet and the pen. You have good notes, and you have um, you, know, you do have all these creative uh, um, apps like uh, the whole Adobe uh, Creative Suite, where, can you, where you can use Photoshop and and design and Illustrator with uh, all, the, all the other stuff. But um, fortunately, all um, all other uh, um, apps and software that you know from before, like the Microsoft uh, Word suits or even this OneNote, I will come to this uh, later on. Um, they do understand the pen technology and you can write and use it uh, right away. You don't have to install any new thing, just switch it on and uh, start your thing. Um, yeah, I'm using OneNote right here. OneNote is for me a very good and, and uh, structured app to, to, uh, for presentation, I think, if you are a teacher or if you are a student, a student, this is a very nice app to work with because you can structure all your topics down here and uh, and uh, I'll show you a little bit and uh, can use them in many, many ways. Um, you have the section up here where, can, where you can choose between a, a pen and a marker and the text marker, for example, you can, you can change the color. Um, you can even 
Well, the thing that I can't uh, show right now, but I have to tell you because I did experience it on a on a on a Microsoft uh, laptop and uh, tablet. You um, OneNote even does have the handwriting recogni recognition show. So when you write something by hand, it translates that thing that you uh, have written by hand directly into text. Unfortunately, Mac doesn't do this. The MacBook doesn't do this because uh, when you do it on the on the Windows operating system, uh, you need uh, to be connected to the Microsoft service on the other way, on the other side of, uh, of <laughs> not Germany, but on the other side of of the world right now. Um, but you can uh, you can put in some lineage like you see here. You can uh, change the lineage even to to this and um, you can write on this every time and let me see anywhere again like i used to when you work with paper i'm not sure if you see it quite quite good but uh i think when i hold it up a little bit there is this lineage you can see the lines yeah okay so uh the light isn't quite good to show this stuff um coming back to to the idea of of this this online classroom um the setup is just like i described like i described could be like like this uh you as a teacher or maybe you as a student uh can use one note or other uh, note apps for taking notes or for like as a teacher uh, you can you can switch this connect this to your computer and, and uh, use Zoom, MS Teams, um, WebEx, and all the other uh, digital tools that are, that are running uh, today that, that, have, that are being used for digital classrooms. Um, and so you can, for example, uh, send, send, um, send your, your PDF that you have down here, like a teacher, you can Let's see, we have red color. You can uh, correct things or, or mark them up. And all the things that you mark here are being stored in the PDF and uh, you can send them back to, you, to the students right away and they can check them for any errors and correct them. And you can send these files back and forth all the time, very easily. Um, in terms of maybe even learning for kids, even you can pull in any any PDF that you have, just scan it, uh, pull it into here and and do this math stuff. Um, for example, like this one is correct, this correct, um, or even, this is all very very low mathematics grade. If you if you can see, it's not uh, it's not high mathematics, but just it's just uh, I like to show you what you could do or what you can do with it by using one note. Um, if you go um, high into higher grades like uh, like maybe uh, students or, or high school, you have a lot of text to that you write and work with. You, know, you can uh, mark texts like this, for example, and you can uh, not, not just highlight them, you can all do some notes besides like uh, that this is very important. Do your notes on this too, something like this. And again, everything you, you write down here is gonna be, is going to be stored in this file. And uh, if you send it to your teacher or to your colleagues, um, they can see all this stuff too. Um, what you too can do is uh, you can also, let me switch into another app. I will show you, for example, an Excel sheet. Here we go. It's the same again. You can, oh, this is a little bit too big. Excel 2 has got, um, this, this is the German version, but I think in the English version, it's, it, it says draw up here. You can choose between uh, pen and marker and, and text marker too. And you can uh, 
right into your Excel files too and mark them up or use the text marker and highlight some parts for your colleagues. And again, it's all getting stored up into in this file. You send this file to your colleague or to your students and uh, they all can see what you have written into this and where you have made some marks or notes onto. Um, this is like OneNote or this is like this is uh, this one is for Excel too. Um, I know a lot of people like to use or work with Evernote. Um, so maybe I could show you a way, the way like how Evernote is working with this too. Evernote is pretty much like OneNote, uh, a little, little bit different in the appearance. But um, if you want to, for let's say you have gotten PDF exam of your students you have to correct, or you are, you are a student, you have to work on an exam, you can just put it into your notes. Give me a second. It's pretty much like drag and drop. Here we go. Maybe Carl has a question for me for the time, as long as I try to put in this PDF. Oh, oh yeah, I have. Actually, I have, I, I have several questions, but you were so much in the flow, I didn't want to disturb you. No problem. But, uh, but it seems that you, um, I mean, you, you, you are writing both analog and digitally. Yes. Um, what would you say are the similarities between analog handwriting and digital handwriting? The, uh, the similarities with the thing I, I just pull off my screen and see anything in oh, okay. Um, it, it's pretty much the same because um, when you write with your hands, the movement you do with your hand is, uh, is like the one that, that you, you do with an analog pen. It, there's no difference between um, analog pen and, and, or a stylus or a digital pen like this. Um, the maybe there is one little difference or a little bit that uh, that when you start with a with a digital pen the first time that you might have a problem with is like uh, this slippery digital um, tablet might be one thing but there is another thing it's it's a little bit technical uh, but I try to explain when you let me say let's see this when you take a piece of paper and you take a pen. And you put down the pen on the paper you have this immediate contact between paper and pen there is no distance between this uh, the technology i show you mm -hmm. later on mm -hmm. so um, um but if, if you take a digital pen you have this nip that is on well, this i think you can see it right now yeah you have the nip you have the display and between nip and display there is i don't let's say two, three, or maybe five millimeters distance between the, the electro electronic nodes and, and the tip that are translating your movement into, into writing. So for the way of moving, when you start writing, it's maybe a millisecond of, of, of latency when you, start, uh, when you write, uh, and it takes this millisecond from your hand and your, and your, uh, and your head to understand the movement. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, our ambition naturally is to to ensure that the analog writing experience is exactly the same as the digital writing experience. So, so would you say we are on a good way? But in in, in small little details, we still need to we still need to do some adjustments to to match it perfectly. Absolutely. Okay. I, 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 I love the pen absolutely because of the two things that I explained even more uh, before. Um, the friction of the pen helps to uh, helps uh, the way of writing to slow the movement down, mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have this uh, very fast uh, moving tip on 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 this uh, on this display, like uh, like the pen display two is a little bit rough. It feels a little bit like 
not much, but a little bit like paper. Um, I think another thing is what you can, uh, when you start writing with a stylus, you can experiment with the, with the pressure level and with the, let me show you this one too, with the, it's in German again. Uh, where is it? With the setup of the of the pen, when you when you set up a, a mouse on the display, you have this uh, slider back here where you can say that the mouse shouldn't move this fast when you uh, move your hand. Yeah, and the same, yeah. And the same is with the pen. You can you can pull down this slide for uh, for the for the pressure levels and even uh, for the for, for the for the movement so as much let me say maybe as much um, settings that you can offer the user to to so he can or um, make the pen feel feel like like a natural pen this will make it as much easier for him for for, for the people to to feel um, to do, so they don't feel it like like some unnatural thing so they think it is really just like a pen on a paper, because right. when when writing, everybody has also a different uh, pressure in his hand. Uh, you have a different fast uh, moving hand writing. Some people write very fast. Some tend to write a little bit uh, slower. So if you if you give them the chance to maybe uh, set up this pressure, this quick uh, quickness, and uh, some other stuff. That would uh, this would make the, the feel of the pen even more um, natural. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And what's what's actually your personal favorite Lamy writing instrument? My personal fa it's 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 a normal fountain pen, the the Lamy Safari. Um, it's um, when when I started back in school, uh, I, I think I can say it's 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 not. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, how do you say, uh, bad thing. Uh, I, I first started in, in second grade, I think it was with a pelican. I don't know if, if, if pelicans still exist, <laughs> but when I, when I changed, when I changed to, uh, to the fifth grade in, uh, on the, in, the, in the school, uh, I first saw the Lamy, the, the Lamy fountain pen. And I think that for the years later on, everybody in our, in our class all had this Lamy fountain pens. And, uh, we all have been switching and changing the upper part with the lower part and uh, mixing up the colors. Uh, this ha we have been doing. I'm not that old, but it's uh, but it's 30 years ago, and uh, last year on this uh, on this uh, festival uh, where I had the chance to to do some action for you for on, on the Lamy stand on the Lamy box, I saw. Uh, the kids do this uh, again and and after 30 years they were sitting there and trying to mix up the colors of their pants of their fountain pants and so uh, pretty nothing changed but this is what i like about uh, your, your pants too they 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 didn't change about uh, through, through all this time uh, that people are using it because it is they are just good as they are and uh, all, when i when i see or when i look at all other other uh, tools, writing tools, they always try to make them look uh, different. They try to change the way you hold it or, or the, the, the slippery or the, the grips. They, they try to do a lot, but um, Lamy still and always feels like, like, this, like this one feels just like a pen. You take it in your hands. You don't have to uh, look for it. How do I hold it? You, you just take it in your hand and you start wrote, writing and you it feels like like your personal pen. So Pablo, it was a great decision or very wise decision to change to Lamy. So I let <laughs> you uh, move on with your presentation. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Um, okay, so uh, I stopped here right here and wanted to show you how you can put into um, a PDF. Uh, let me switch this off. Don't need this one. And I was looking for my PDF that I can't find right now. Very nice, very cool. <laughs> a 
there's one thing that I didn't quite um, uh, that I'm not quite good in handling with, but uh, maybe you would you will uh, experience this too when you work with two or more than one display, then the, the mouse runs. Uh, I, I I don't rem remind myself where it runs out and <laughs> where it runs in, but here we have got the Microsoft Pen, and it doesn't want to stay in here. Uh, Don't worry, Pavel. Today is the rebellion day for computers. So Absolutely. we have had so many minor issues throughout the day <laughs> in, in different areas. So <laughs> today is the day they rebel. Yes, they're, they're coming back at us. They're heading, <laughs> striking back. Yeah. Doesn't matter. We 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 we'll yeah, we'll we'll just just come back to one note. So in one note, it's, it should be pretty the same in Evernote, but I just can't find this this uh, silly uh, open new file button. Um, but here it is. Like you can open up a new site, new 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 uh, part of the thing. And fortunately, I hope. Evernote understands me what I want to do. Uh, there you go. It's just like drag and drop. Evernote did this yesterday. Evernote didn't want to do this now, but uh, just as, as I demonstrated right now, uh, OneNote understands what I, what I want to do. And uh, you can drag and drop all your files, other, other word files and PDFs right into your <clears throat> into your section and start working on it. Uh, blow this up a little bit so you can see it. This is some um, some student exam on the on the microscope. It's a German, but I think you get the point what it is about. And uh, again, coming back to this topic, online classroom teaching and learning online is. Uh, the way with the pen you can fill out these parts. Let me see what this is. I think this one is called uh, this. Oh, it's a little bit thick. The line. Let's make it a little bit thinner. Even. So this is a light source, and um, I think this is called. Move overhead. And if you don't think it's right, you can erase it straight away and write it again. So you can work very fast and uh, quick, even if you shouldn't. Like I said, handwriting is not about working fast, but it's, uh, but you can use all these digital tools for your handwriting or for this online class thing. Um, Another thing is, I think uh, when, when you're teaching online in online classrooms or as uh, when you sit here as a student and try to stay focused on the things you're, the teacher is telling you about, um, I think a good thing is to even here slow things down. Um, as I said before, all this digital world made us wanna, to want to work fast and, and uh, and communicate in a, in, a, in a much more faster way. But I think teaching isn't about working fast. So um, if you slow down a bit, give your students time to come uh, to follow you, the stuff that you're presenting, maybe like this. Um, this would be a, a much more better experience for both sides uh, in terms of uh, distance le learning. Um, like I said, I'm using this top-down view cam as a setup. Um, you can switch your uh, or connect your laptop even to a, to a Beamer, to a projector, sorry. And, um, and the, the whole screen can be projected to, to the wall in, in, in the classroom, for example. So it's, this is not just a solution if you think of the distance learning. This might be also a setup that you can use in your classroom as well. As a, as a teacher sitting in front of your students and um, where you don't use the, the old chalkboard anymore, 
but uh, switch into this or dive deep into this digital world and use this tablet and the projector as your teaching stuff in the classroom too. This might be possible too, yeah. Um, did I forget something? I hopefully didn't. Let me go back to this one. Um, maybe as some last words that I liked, uh, that I liked, uh, that I read some somewhere on Lamy's page, and uh, Carl said this uh, before too. Um, Lamy thinks this the way same like, like I do. The the analog and the digital worlds they don't exclude each other, or they shouldn't exclude each uh, exclude each other. Um, I think it's more like putting together the best pieces of both worlds and I experience this through my work all the time. I wouldn't like to miss my analog pants for the for one part of my work and uh, I would be a very, very sad person if I wouldn't have any stylus or tablet anymore to do all this client stuff that I do uh, with my digital tools. Yeah, so um, last thing. Before we go into, go into the questions, uh, question section, um, thanks for watching for now. Um, if you have any questions, head on, bring them on. Carl, if you have any question, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, one question I would have, and that is um, since you're using writing instruments a lot by yourself, have you have you ever gifted a Lamy writing instrument to some of your friends or family or, or relatives? Yes, sure. Uh, the, 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 the first the first fountain pen my my daughter uh, started write, write with uh, writing with it was two years ago when she switched from 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 pencil to uh, to to the fountain pen was a Lamy for sure. No, not no, yeah, no, not the other one. Not the ones. Not the other ones. <laughs> And, uh, and well, yes, and uh, last time I, a friend of us, or um, their, their daughter also, um, we, we, um, we uh, how do you say, we, we made them, she had a shared birthday and we made her a, a donor, not a donor. We, we uh, Carl, what does it, what, how do you say Schenken in English? A gift. We made a gift, right, thank you. We gifted her with a, uh, with a Lamy, with a Lamy Safari. Perfect. The good choice. One. The pink one. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's got to be the pink one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for this uh, online session. Highly, highly appreciate it. Thanks for watching and thanks for having me. Thank you, Pavel. Um, we have a couple of questions. We have two questions uh, that we have received from our audience. So I will just, um, I think some of them we can answer together. So one question is about what kind of other solutions are there out there if if there are any other solutions that would allow let's say a teacher and students to work on to write and take notes on the same uh same documents same canvas together and and how, how it would work together with lamy and a wacom device um as much as i know please correct me um the, the thing is that i showed up here is uh, Wacom technology, the Wacom tablets, the, uh, the EMR technology that you uh, guys developed. And that is uh, that Lamy put into this uh, ball pen. Um, as much as I know, you can watch, you can have a look on Lamy's web page on Lamy.com, I think into the shop. Carl, maybe you know this better. Um, there is a list of, of uh, another products that are compatible with this pen, right? Yeah, yes, it's correct. On on, on lamy.com slash EMR, you can find a compatibility list which shows all the devices that are compatible with the Lamy Alsa Black EMR writing instrument. Yeah. Yes, yeah, right. And um, and maybe just a question on and to both of you to Lamy and to Wacom, as much as I know, uh, the pen works also with the Android uh, um, tablet and, and smartphones. They have this recognition too right so um it it basically i mean um it, if if a device a tablet or a smartphone or whatever it is if it has uh, emr module included 
then it will work together with the LAMI Alstar Black EMR because then the, the EMR module of the of the device and the EMR module of the writing instrument will resonate with each other and they, yeah. they, they will function with each other. But in order to be sure, it's it's ideal to, to, to visit our website and check out the compatibility list. Okay, cool, nice. That's that that's the part, or that let's say that that's the part of the of the the, the hardware part. Uh, there is this software and app part two when it comes uh, into into co-working and into um, into uh, into this th into this online classroom thing. Um, uh, I, I see. I think it's Sergio just wrote it down. Um, there are uh, several apps and tools that are cloud-based, where you can share. Uh, data and, and files right away. Um, even with Microsoft, I think Microsoft 365 has got this um, uh, solution for for everything where you can um, put up uh, like like share share folders where share for uh, share sharing folders where you can where you can uh, share the files with your students or with the teachers straight away. This might be a way how to work. Um, cloud-based yeah exactly also zoom has whiteboarding feature uh, similar to teams um, there are like microsoft solutions and some open source uh, solutions free solutions that also allow multiple people teachers and students or co-workers to to open up fire up this uh, shared canvas and and take notes or or write stuff uh, brainstorm together so there are a lot of options out there um, you can you can easily uh, google them or um, we also have compiled a list of uh, softwares that that allows you to whiteboard together on our blog uh, i will share our link uh, later uh, in a couple of minutes yes okay cool. um okay checking um another question coming from uh heidi uh can lamy all-star work as a mouse uh and yeah the answer yes. is absolute yes, right? Yes, absolutely right. It's uh, it, it's at first it is a pen because or a stylus. You take it in your hand and uh, you you immediately think, okay, this is now for writing. But you can uh, tip with uh, with the pen on every every button on your display, and it uh, just feels or is is just working like a mouse. So you can put your mouse mouse right away, and uh, maybe here to show you how this would be working. If you make this choice, you can slide it and put it another way. Things that you do with the mouse, you can do with the pen too. Yeah. So as long as the, the device has uh, the EMR technology supported, as, as you are ex as you're showcasing here with the Wacom One device, uh, within the confines of the, of the screen, the pen is an input device with the same capabilities and functionalities of a mouse input and just more ergonomic. Yeah, right. It feels more natural. I mean, I mean we, we, we are used to work with the mouse. Uh, uh, this is nothing new for us. And I know some creative people that are, that are creating amazing uh, pictures and, and, and uh, amazing creative stuff just with the mouse. That I always think like it's it's mind blowing. <laughs> why why don't you do, don't you just take a pen and do the same? But yes, um, uh, this thing works as a mouse too. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, new questions are coming up. So so cool. Mm -hmm. So exciting. Oh yes, please. That's why we are here for. Okay. Um, so let's, there is a question from uh, Murtaza Ali. Uh, amazing product, but what is the USP and does social media apps work with uh, Wacom and also combined with the stylus with the Lamy pen? Um, yeah, maybe just a quick answer on our end as Pavo, you have mentioned, this is uh, the Wacom tablet is like a second screen on your device. So basically um, you can drag and drop your uh, browser window into this tablet and use it however you wish to. You can drag and uh, you can drag your uh, apps, uh, browser, um, whatever, even games into the screen. And using the uh, Lamy Pan, you, you can uh, you can use those apps however you wish. And also having the second screen, as Pavo mentioned earlier, 
it will allow you, let's assume in an online uh, teaching, online classroom environment, the main computer screen could be where you keep an eye on your classmates or your students, whereas the tablet is where you take your notes or do your annotations uh, and everything. So in that sense, um, yeah, it's, it's an operation system agnostic, whether it's a Mac, Windows, uh, Linux, or Android, selected Android devices, it's the extension screen with the pen input capability. Yeah, so Ono, what do you th what do you think? Sh should I show um, show a little bit more of my setup? I can pull off my cam. Yeah, Maybe definitely. This... I think it would I've... be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Wait a second. It's it's not that uh, complicated. It's really easy. Just to show you right now. Here you go. This is like my MacBook, the screen that you see right now, connected uh, with with the tablet. And uh, just to make it maybe a little bit more easier to understand, I will switch off the cable. Um, let me see where there we go. And switch it right here off too. So if you see it now, this is my laptop background picture and it's the same here on the one note so it just mirrors mirrors this one screen uh, to this tablet and uh, it's the same thing that you look at and when you when you take let's say the pdf that i used before either uh, this microscope thing when i pull it up here then it appears on this screen and i can open it up from here have to pull up my mouse a little bit. Well, let's see, push it down here to this side. So this is just a mirror thing, right? Okay. So it, it can be an extension of your desktop or it can also exactly mirror your main screen. So you can have two of the same desktop Yes. or you can have an extended desktop where you can move screens from one, one side to the other, uh, from your computer, whichever one you're using, into the tablet or into the tablet to the computer. So it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's highly flexible and, and customizable depending on what your needs are on the specific uh, thing that you're working on. Yes. Um, right. Another question we have from John, John Alessandro. Um, so, he, he's asking, first of all, is one not free and does it have an app? Uh, and then the second part of the question is if it allows, if he's copy pasting an image uh, into a OneNote document, if a user can freely take notes or annotate or dribble over that image and not, you know, around it, does OneNote allow that kind of note taking or sketching? Yes, absolutely. The first question is uh, just to answer: it, it's it's completely free for for for, the, for Mac users. You can download it in the App Store. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I think yes, you can uh, download download it in the in the Google Play Store and the, uh, the Android by Store too. Um, if if not, you would have to purchase the. I, I, in Germany, it's the it's the Microsoft Family Bundle. Where you have win, uh, Windows and <clears throat> sorry the Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint and so OneNote apps into it. But as much as I know, OneNote as a standalone app is all free, so you can just download it to any operating system you are using and start using it right away. Um, the other question is, if I understand it right, I'll start OneNote again. Give me a second. Here we are. Um, just like I pulled the, the PDF into it, I could uh, take a picture. Let's see if I find, if I find one that I'm, I can show you. <clears throat> I'll make, maybe even start a new one. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
So maybe take this one. This is like, again, like drag and drop. You take any picture from or from any, any folder that you are, uh, that is on your, on your PC. <clears throat> And then again, you can take your marker, maybe take a little bit, some other colored pen and um, write onto it, take notes on, onto it. Um, like this, and when you share this one like as a PDF, Uh, let's hit it on the written space. There you go. This is the PDF that I just exported and you see the note that I put into it is um, being stored into the, into the JPEG or PDF or any other file. That, uh, that you can export or work with, yeah. Perfect. Nice. So um, I think we have answered all the questions. Cool. Uh, hold on, one last question. Is that image movable around? Like I don't have to control R to move it to the right. Uh, that's a, that's a canvas that you can move the image around as far as I know. Yeah, wait. No, it's, it's, it switches to the pen um, immediately. <laughs> you can grab, oh wait, not that big. Yeah, you can pull, um, in German, it says "lasso auswahl." Uh, I'm, I'm not sure the, the 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 what the English term is. You the, can the, the lasso tool. The lasso tool, right? You, you can you can use it and uh, make make an uh, go around, and then you can move it where you want. So, pretty much, you can then uh, put your own working uh, uh, sheets together with your. Oh wait, it's too big. Absolutely. I mean, with, one note agents and another note that you put into here. Yeah. Just one note is it. definitely a super powerful tool, but um, if if you need something, if there are any specific needs that 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 one note doesn't answer, uh, somehow if it doesn't answer your needs, I think uh, it's really easy to find some other tools, uh, open source solutions. There are many of them online. Um, you can find other other uh, apps to answer your needs, but basically, with the combination of a pen input on on a Wacom display, uh, the the options, the opportunities are limitless in, in terms of the intuitive use of how you want to take notes or how you want to uh, edit, annotate, uh, or just uh, collaborate with with the teachers, uh, students, or coworkers. Yes, absolutely. This, this, just as I said, I, uh, I, I, uh, I, ch I have chosen OneNote for for this uh, session as a tool because I think it's uh, easy to handle with, and uh, the, the 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 barrier to start with it is not that 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 big because because any every button is uh, clear for itself. But yes, sure. If, if out there 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 is there are so many apps and and uh, programs that you should give a try. Um, and uh, like like I tried to sh show you with Evernote, if you like Evernote or any other note taking apps, they um, and if they support this uh, paint technology, give it a try and uh, find out what suits you uh, the best. Yes, thank you, Pavel. So um, now oh. I will I will take over the screen share. Okay. And, and and slowly go into the wrapping up. Nice. Yes. Um, thank you all. And you can, you are seeing the right screen, right? 
the the slide or the presenter view? We're seeing the the slide. All good. Perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining the session. Thank you for your questions and and being there with us. Um, you can follow us on social media by uh, at Wacom. And if, if you create your content or any questions you have uh, made with Wacom is the hashtag that we always keep an eye on. So if you, if you create something and post it, we will definitely see it. And if not, if you have any questions that you want to ask to us, you can reach out to us through our social media channels or you can just visit wacom.com. And we have, our, we have our live chat module that our uh, colleagues are ready to answer all of your questions. Um, for going deeper into the OneNote and other online solutions, uh, guides, and how-tos on, on online education, you can visit our blog, community.wacom.com slash EU. Uh, we have tons of articles and, and great content there that will, I believe, answer a lot of your questions, definitely. Uh, please don't forget to follow our presenter, Pavo, uh, on djangonaut.com and on his social media accounts via at djangonaut. Um, and definitely, last but not least, our partner, Lamy, who brought this session to you today. Uh, please do follow, give a follow on Lamy on social media at Lamy underscore official. Uh, and also you can find out about our uh, mutual solutions of Wacom One devices with uh, Lamy All Star Pan at uh, www.lamy.com slash Wacom. And one last reminder, you can visit our Wacom eStore to save 20% on Wacom One Lamy Bundle for the next 24 hours only. The deal is up. It's a flash deal for you all uh, exclusively. So uh, visit our Wacom eStore. It's an EMEA only offer. Uh, unfortunately, if there are anyone outside of the EMEA, um, sorry about that, but you can give it a go and take a look at it. And if you're outside of the EMEA, Still check out the e-store. We have uh, ongoing offers in various products. So I believe there might be something that's great for you. So thank you all. Uh, that's it from us today. And we hope to see you again in our next session. Uh, please keep an eye on both Lamy and Wacom social media accounts to keep up to date with the, with the upcoming activities and sessions with us. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Goodbye.